Hi, welcome everybody and welcome back to the health bar. Um, as you can tell, I'm ill <laughs> at the moment, so uh, I'm sorry about the sound quality if it sounds different or um, especially for the people just listening on the Spotify. Um, it is still me, I promise. Um, so, welcome to the health bar. As I mentioned, um, things have been going really well with the health bar at the moment, which is, which is great. We're actually going to start um, its own YouTube channel, its own... Um, instagram twitter and tiktok channel as well um so those should be out in the next week or so which will be really good so it just keeps everything together and it's not my gaming content as well mixed up um so anyway as we always start this we always start with my mental health um my mental health has been really up and down actually this last week um the beginning of the week i really struggled i'm not really sure why um normally i know when things are happening or why things are happening you know to me with with regards to my mental health but i actually don't know just a low mood <clears throat> and um yeah it was just one of them kind of things low mood and um but we are actually better now because i actually spoke to my other half about it and we had a kind of sit down and just a chat and um yeah that always helps you know it always helps for me anyway personally is to talk about it and um again this is why we're here um to obviously talk about you know mental health and and how it can help and i believe that talking does help people um so that's my mental health for for this um yeah for this week um now we jump onto a little bit of like gaming news um with regards to kind of gaming news it's always really hard with uh, I, I say it's every week <sighs> mental health and gaming news there's always a lot of positive stuff because i think it was so negative a few years ago that gaming was bad for your mental health that now it's just flooded with positive stuff which is great but I don't want people to think that gaming is always positive. Um, there is a lot within gaming that is negative with mental health, so just to bear that in mind. Um, but this article is a positive one, and it does say about how um, you know how video games can basically calm people down. Um, it's um, it's a distract like there's notes here and it says like distraction is helpful, avoidance is not, which I think is really important. Um, also for uh, for parents, I think there's a really good thing here for parents. It says be curious, not judgmental, um, and that's basically yeah, be curious on why your children are playing it, what games they're playing, what are they actually looking to get out of it um what is the game about you know that type of thing i think really helps because instead of you just going no you can't play that or you know you kind of want to know why they want to do it a lot of it obviously especially for younger kids is because their friends have played it um but yes it's always worth a look the the i'll, I'll link obviously this um this web page into um into the descriptions anyway <clears throat> and um you can obviously take a look but it's really interesting it's nice and again it's it's um it's done by nintendo life um, so it does, it actually kind of, it goes through a lot of stuff about kind of, um, you know, with parents and flip sides and all that kind of stuff. So quite an interesting article, but yeah, it's good to to get people to, especially parents, I think they should definitely be, as it says, they're curious and not judgmental because, um, you know, kids are playing games. They're always going to play games. It's obviously what they're going to be getting out of it uh, or what they're looking for, you know, and there's always good things about, you know, adventure and they can get kind of, you know, um yeah they can just get like power that they're not getting through their own life um and they can obviously take control of what they're doing in the game and sometimes life it feels like they're out of control um which is really important um anyway that is the news or as much news as i can find <laughs> um we're really excited to have fullest on um his full name is fullest egx everyone calls him the funniest names when he goes into streams like full uh steg x and all this kind of stuff which is always quite funny but it's fullest um so i've known fullest for quite a while and i actually can't even remember how we met which is really bizarre i'm sure he'll probably tell you um but anyway let's let him introduce himself so as always welcome fullest hey how are we doing? Thank you. I'm very well. Thank you for having me. No, no worries. Honestly, I really appreciate it. It's a pleasure it. to be along your side. I know. You. I, I appreciate it, mate. Really do appreciate yeah. it. It's nice that, um, yeah, it's nice that people want to come on and talk about stuff, you know? Yeah, it's, I think there's like a, like with men, like, like men and mental health is, is like, there's a big stigma around it. And it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, it's, it's a hard one to talk about. Yep, for sure. You don't know who who you talk to, or you get those things like, "Oh, you're a man, it's okay." 
like, yeah. suck it up, you know. Yeah. Or like, you'll get those people like, oh, it's fine. It's just like a phase or uh, you'll be fine. Give it a week or two. Yeah. Or yeah. Or the most common one is like, yeah, I've been there. I've done that. This is how I dealt with it. But it was different on how they deal with it and yeah, how their mental health is. So like, yeah, you could, un- like, you can be in the same, like, no one's in the same situation. Yeah. As everyone else, like, yeah, you might have mental health as that person, like, similar to mental health, or, um, but it's the way on, um, it's the way people deal with it differently. Yeah. You can't say, oh, yeah, I understand, because you'll truly never understand. Yeah. But you'll have, you'll have some understanding of it and what they might be going through. Yeah, you'll have your own experience. Know, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Of course. And people but can no kind of no. And people can obviously go on that. Sorry, let's 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 before we get crazy. Let's introduce yeah. yourself, who you are, right, what you do, uh, what you sh- if you stream, if you don't stream, what game yeah, you play, sure. etc. Um, <laughs> I'm for TGX. Some people call it like I make you sad. I go into people's streams. They call me for this stay. The most common one is egg for this eggs. Yeah. I was like, okay, let's just get that one out of the way. It's not eggs. It's EGX. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, uh, I'm a full-time streamer on Twitch. Uh, mainly play Sea of Thieves, um, play MMO, I play FPS games. Anything that really like tickles my fancy, really. Yeah. Um, from the UK as well. He certainly is I with think. that accent, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, so how, any from, how did we actually? How do we know each other? Um, so I think it was in someone. It was in Rock Nation's Discord. That's I saw it. that you was playing. I I recently bought Tarkov because it was recommended me by yeah. uh, a couple of uh, on stream. Yeah, and they wanted me to play a different game, and they were like, "Why not?" If you because I was thinking about getting Squad at the time. Yeah, and they were like, "Why not try Tarkov?" And I saw that you was in Tarkov. I saw that you was a streamer. Yeah, I checked out your stream. I was like, "Oh, this geezer, you know, he's, he's okay. Like, he's pretty, <laughs> he's pretty funny." I was yep. like, yeah, sure. Like, we have some similar vibes. We... Mm-hmm. And then, so I messaged you on Discord saying, mm-hmm. hey, like, look, I'm new to Tarkov. Can you uh, teach me the ropes, etc.? Sherpa. Come play with you. Yeah, yeah man. Can you come and Sherpa me? Because I had a couple of Sherpas who I'm friend with. And that one, that was a funny experience. Yeah. It was a <laughs> worthwhile experience. It didn't go too well, but it was still a funny experience <laughs> of Tarkov. Um, and then yeah, I got into Tarkov by playing with you. Yeah, man, that was a lot of fun. And then that's and then our relationship grew. Yeah, exactly. And it is. We've been having each other for a while. It's been nice, and yeah, we drew it up quite a bit on Sounds, um, yeah, you know, on Tarkov, and then obviously yeah, other, um, games, as other well. games as well, which has been good. Yeah. It's been really good fun. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So um, obviously you you touched on a bit of obviously mental health and that uh, yeah. at the beginning there. Um, so with yourself, um, have yeah. have you kind of obviously have you suffered with mental health? Are you suffering uh, with mental health? What's what's your your story? So, I think it was early twenty. So I found that I had I got diagnosed with depression. Yeah. After the downfall mixer, because I got a mixer partner. Yeah. After grinding for so long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I didn't go. I didn't go the conventional route of YouTube. Or anything like that yeah i didn't really know much about streaming when i first started gaming because i, I had a, i always had a pc i used to play on like rune escape yeah games like that D and then i transitioned from rune escape to like league and other games like elder scrolls mm-hmm. and then when cfes came out that really like blew, blew up my career on like mixer and stuff yeah and so i was able to hit mixer partner but when i went down yeah such period short period of time over twitter over like within two days yeah that really affected my mental health and then i found when i so i had a local my mom was like a gp okay so she knew there was something wrong with me she yeah. was like look go and get checked out because my mother couldn't know. She yeah of course know. it's obviously like confidentiality stuff in the <clears> practice <throat> where i was at and where she was working at so she couldn't treat me yeah so she passed me on to a colleague and they were like, and I said to him, like, look, I'm getting lack of sleep. I can't concentrate. And I do, like, and they were like, look, let's do a, a test. Mm-hmm. So they were like, so they asked me a bunch of questions on a piece of paper and asked me how I feel and stuff like that. And then uh, I think it was a day later, they uh, phoned me and said, yeah, you've been diagnosed with depression. Yeah. And that was early 20s. 
2016 to 2018, somewhere around those year times. Right, okay. I, but I wasn't, so I was brought up like, if you haven't, if you got something to deal with, just swipe out under the carpet, like any emotions, just swipe out under the carpet. Like, yeah. And that's the way I've been brought up with like my family and stuff. Yeah. So, like, we don't talk about emotions, we don't deal with anything, we just sweep it under sweep it under the carpet. That's a very British thing, isn't it? I think. Yeah. Yeah. Very British so, and very old school mentality. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, because I, was, I went to boarding school and stuff, so I wasn't able to, like, and then, yeah, yeah so I wasn't able to speak to my mum about it or when my dad was still alive at that point. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to speak to him about it because, like, we, we never spoke about that kind of stuff to each other. Yeah. Even though we were very, very close. Yeah, of course. We just never spoke about those kind of things that, we, like I said, we just dealt with, like, sweep it under the carpet. And so they, um, they were like, do you want to take medication? I was like, look, medication would have been the last resort for me. Mm -hmm. so I didn't want to get addicted to any anything like yeah. that. I didn't want to take any medication. Of course. I thought I'd be fine. And then, so they suggested cancelling. Yeah. So they offered me the cancelling on the very same day, on like the day after they phoned me, and I took it. Yeah. And then I realised that wasn't the route for me. Mm -hmm. So Because obviously I told them, like, that I don't know how I feel, or like, I don't know how to speak to it, let alone to a stranger who I never met before. Yeah, 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 of course. Despite them being a uh, professional and stuff. Yeah. I've never spoken about my emotions like that before. Yeah. So I just dealt with it on my own and then got back. And then obviously took a couple of weeks off from Mixer. Obviously when Mixer was dying down, I was still streaming on Mixer because we had a month period where we yeah, could yeah. transition to somewhere else. Mm -hmm. I transitioned to Facebook like my manager told me to. And then it was at that point when I realized like gaming is for me, like it was, it was my safe haven. Yeah. Like where I could so like when I game, even though I do get kind of annoyed and I like <laughs> like I just want to punch my monitor sometimes. But like it's it's a place for me where I can get out. It it blocks me from the outside world. Yeah. If that makes sense. It mm -hmm. takes it's it keeps me sane. In other words, like I'm not like like an angry man or anything like that. I don't yeah, go yeah. when I come off the computer I don't go angry or like or do anything stupid, anything like that. Yeah. But it's just, it just keeps, it passes away the time for me. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you'll see me like late at night, it's like still gaming because I, I, I'm not tired or anything. It's like I'm just powering through because I'm, it's keeping me, it's keeping me sane. It's keeping, keeping me yeah. away from the demon. <laughs> but yeah, true. Yeah. It's like, um, is so people that obviously are listening to this and obviously don't know what Mixer is. Yeah. So Mixer was a online streaming platform. So you could kind of go and watch people game. It's, yeah. it's the same as Twitch. If you know what Twitch is. Um, it was a lot can... more smaller community. Yeah. A lot more close knit. And it had, it had more benefits. I think it was, it wasn't. It's not as diverse as Twitch, like in yes. games where it was hard to grow on. It was it wasn't hard to grow on because everyone knew each other. Yeah, I really and enjoyed each other, each other and it, Yeah, that, really enjoyed Mixer. Yeah. I thought yeah, it was it really was good great fun. fun. Yeah. Great community. Yeah, it was. It was nice. It was, again, it's a shame it went down but Yeah, very short lived and it's a shame because like you know, I, I, I always think that there needs to be you know, other platforms like that, but then with with I think Twitch the reason and, why it blew up. Yeah, I think the reason why it blew up because obviously they had big streamers coming to the platform too. Yep, of course. But they also had the FPL as well. I think it was FPL where you wouldn't have any stream delay from yes. the game to the streamer or anything like that. You wouldn't have any delay. Yep. But it, it was going places and I think it brought, it brought out the competitive size for other like, platforms. Yeah, like it made, it made other, other platforms, same. yeah, exactly. Bring it up and be better, um, yeah. you know, which is good. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, so obviously you mentioned obviously gaming is like so same as with me really. I think gaming, you know, and streaming for me is definitely a safe place yeah. for me. It's not like um and I'm the same as you, it's not like um yeah. I ever feel like I'm in danger or anything like that. It's uh, no for me it's um it's a safe place. I have to I do have to fight to get myself out of the house. I very yeah, much have to do yeah. that. Um, I'm lucky, and obviously I always mention this, that I've got my little, and so I have to go to classes and yeah. things like that. And so I go out, and you know, even like yesterday, yeah, when we had no... Yeah, exactly. And when we had no classes, I was I'm like, right, upset. I'm pushing myself out, and we went like yeah. food shopping and all that kind of stuff, and it's great, so I, I do get out. But So with yourself... I, I'm like a hedgehog, mate. I'm like a hybrid 
hibernated hedgehog. I don't go out unless <laughs> if I have to. If I need to go out for toilet roll, I'll go out for toilet roll. Right. I walk down like five minutes down the road to the car and grab a grab like a like a nine pack of toilet roll or yeah. something, and then I'm straight back. It's like as soon as I go outside, now, I, I I even take vitamin tablets now and again. Yeah. Because I don't go out that often. Mm-hmm. Because I, I don't. It feels w- so for me to go outside. Like I went out today. Yeah. So I needed food and stuff. I needed to- more toilet roll. Yeah. <laughs> And some and some fresh air. Yes. Uh, for me, it's a struggle to get out now mm-hmm. because it's like my sleeping schedule has changed so much. Yeah. It's like it's it's different different days that like I've been like out. Oh. It's always changing, so I'm not, I normally sleep for the day unless if I stay up late and then uh, yeah. I'll stay up early. Like then I'll go to bed about three or four. Yeah. Usually maybe later, or sometimes I'll stay up until like the next day try and fix my sleeping schedule. Yeah, a certain extent, but it's like when I go out, it feels so. It feels weird for me to interact with other people now outside in the normal world. Is that who are not who are not gaming who don't un? So it's harder for me to. It's like my social my social interactions have yeah. like been limited to a certain extent, but it's like I normally don't normally talk to people unless if I need to if I need help with the team or something something flashing for like id or something <laughs> or, or like that or yeah so normally i don't tend to speak to people unless i'm on buying something yeah but apart from that i just go out come back i don't stay out for long i just go out and come back and that's it and then i'm back on the pc yeah or, or i'm on youtube or something you know and it's and i i i know that might not be healthy but for me so i was just about to ask but yeah yeah it's for me that it's like a routine yeah, so I'm so used to, because I was so used to having roots. I don't, yeah, for me, like, because when I was on mix, I would get up, I'd do stuff, come back. I'll go. I'll, I used to be a lot more proactive. I used to go out quite a lot. I used to go out for walks quite a lot. Yeah, but for me then, it was more kind of like a job mm-hmm. in a sense because I was earning a lot of money from mixer. Yeah, and then now because I'm not like. Having that luxury of like being mixer, being mixer partner, it doesn't feel like I have a. When I stream, I stream now because I want to. I have more fun when I stream. Right. Okay. It doesn't feel like a job. If that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Whereas before, it did feel like a job. Like it was paying for it was paying for my living. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Now I don't really have to worry about that. Yeah. It's just like I don't have to worry about like certain expenses or having to wake up. I would be like, oh, I have to stream to make money. Yeah. Now I just stream whenever I want. Yeah, yeah. And it's like I have much more fun and much more, and I feel, I feel, I don't know. It feels like a weight off my shoulders that makes it die down in a way. Yeah, it's like interesting. There wasn't many expectations. There wasn't many like expectations on my yeah. shoulders, or you know, or having to like put up a front to prove to people that was okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fair and enough. Wasn't. I think that kind of affected my mental health as well, but I just brush it off yeah in a way so how do you feel like as you say when you go out you're just a bit yeah. you just want to go out and get back in do you think because obviously i mean obviously there's a lot of uh, the information out there and and studies yeah. that you know if you exercise if you go out for a walk if you get fresh air yeah. if you get vitamin d and you know it's all that type of stuff if you get that you will start to you know feel better this is why there yeah. are less people with mental health illnesses that are in sunnier climates you know it's just yeah. you know it, it, it's facts and figures you know um so do you I, feel I any that, how much as possible but do you think I, it helps I, you going out this is, this is... It does because yeah. obviously I get the exercise. Yeah. So and obviously you know me, I like I like my little takeaway here and yeah, there. Yeah, indeed you do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not learning a lot, uh, but yeah, it's like I have a background and I can touch grass when I need to. Yeah. <laughs> I'm joking. I do. I do. If I'm not, if I'm not, if I'm not gaming and I've got nothing else to do and it's a nice day. Yeah. And I will go. I go. I got like a park next to me, so I can. Yeah. I normally walk around the park for a couple of laps. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, I want to get back inside now. It's not like a urgent like. If I go to the shop, it's not like an urgent thing. Like I rush there and rush back. It's like I yeah, yeah, like yeah. a steady walk. Yeah, but it just feels weird for me to go outside. Yeah, it just feels a little bit too weird for me to go outside I and I look at people and I'm like, I get it. like when it's I just like... it's true when it first happened to me. 
<clears throat> and I, I, I didn't want to go out or anything. And the missus started like saying, like, you've got to go out and blah, blah, blah. And I'd walk. And the weirdest thing is, I, it, I felt like it, and I don't know if you, you feel, feel this or felt this. I felt it wasn't me that was walking. Like, I felt it was just this, I don't know, it was really bizarre, like, feeling of, of just, like, I don't know, like, nothingness. But kind of what actually, one of the things that really did help me, and I know we, we actually do the same thing here, um, is, um, which is really strange, and people will laugh, and people will joke, blah, 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 yeah. um, Pokemon Go. It's the most weirdest thing in the world, right? And if no one knows what it is, it's a game on your phone and it's about Pokemon and you catch Pokemon. But what you actually have to do, you physically have to walk to places to, you know, catch Pokemon, to put Pokemon in gyms, to spin stops, to... I'm sorry if we're going into a bit of detail and you don't know what it is, but that's fine. But what it is is basically you have to walk to go to these places and do stuff. And it got me out. And yeah. it really did. Every day, I was like, right, I need to go. I need to go out. I need to go out. I need to. And I had to build myself up, which made it always worse. Um, but then I would get my phone out and I'd go, right, I'm going to do the same as you. I'm going to do a lap. I'm going to do two laps of this. I'm going to take you know, 20 minutes, 15, 10, half an hour, an hour, whatever it was. Because it obviously it depends on your mood, how, how long you obviously want to be out for. Yeah. Um, and but it helped me massively and people still take the mick and i am slightly addicted to pokemon go because i'll still use it every day even if i'm not going out for a walk or you know i still will and it is a little bit of an addiction i suppose um but yeah it helped me loads and i know you play it as well so i guess obviously i play it it quite regularly like i'm Mm -hmm. see i'm a bit fortunate in that sense because like a lot of poker stop outside my house. Nice. I don't actually have to go out. I can stay in my room and <laughs> just, spin just keep, it. On spinning it, keep on spinning it when I want to. But for the gym, I do have to go out because yeah. there's like three in the park. Yeah. And there's a couple more down the road. But it's like, if I'm not playing that, i got Spotify on, mm-hmm. keep my mind off other things and to try and keep it a little bit normal for me so I don't get a little... It's not like I'm afraid to go out. Mm-hmm. Or anything like that i'm scared to go out or like i have a phobia or, anything, or being like i used to be quite a people's person yeah but now because i'm like dealing well, i'm a game with people online or it's not like you're not having that face-to-face interaction like you normally would when you have some, with someone outside so having that for like for so many years and just being by myself yeah kind of got i kind of got it so it's like i don't mind going out or i don't mind meeting other friends going to the pub etc mm-hmm well, it just feels weird when I do because I'm not gaming or and it feels weird when I come back to gaming. It's just like, oh, I actually went out today. I actually did something proactive. Yeah. Which is not a part of my routine because I eat, sleep, game, eat, sleep, game instead of going out yeah. doing some other fun things. Yeah. With, um... It's like I do like Pokemon Go, though. Yeah, it does. I think it does. It gets you out. It does, does, the time. Know? I think it does. It gets you out and... <clears throat> I think it's a, a really positive thing for, for mental health anyway, I, I think. Games yeah. like that. Um it tracks how many meters you walk doing steps yeah, and exactly. stuff, which is which like if you're on if you want to be on the healthy side, you don't have to play Pokemon, you can just use it to track exactly. how many meters you walk. Exactly. So I do that sometimes. I'll go to the shop, like if I need to crack open an egg or something, I'll be like, Oh, I know cops. I'll walk to Carbon back a exactly. couple of times. Yeah, with two K eggs, job done. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, it's, it's very true. Just trying to keep my mind on something to keep myself proactive. Yeah, with um, obviously because you like, and you said earlier that and it is your your gaming schedule is is very yeah. different. To, uh, I think a lot, well, not a lot of people. I mean, we always know here in the UK, we always know that we tend to play later on into the evenings yes that is obviously people with regards to obviously normal life and finishing work and then playing but we all know that when it gets to 10 o'clock at night midnight at night yeah americans exactly americans are tending to be coming on and you know and it's weird they've obviously it's a bigger kind of it's a massive community over there obviously compared to the uk so um that's obviously yeah. what you do, isn't it? You you play obviously late into the into yeah, the mornings and try to. and sleep during the day, I guess. Yeah, it, it depends on like mood I'm in. Like Mixer was a big part of that. Mm-hmm. Like change my because like you'll get 
that I realized like yeah I would stream from say like nights from like nine or tw I used to stream from one yeah. till late like yeah. super late mm -hmm. I'll be talking about like five o'clock in the morning right I would be going from one until like five wow with, like a couple of breaks here and there yeah I needed to but this was like every day that I was doing that like, and then I wouldn't stream on Sunday for example yeah I would have a day off and then I want to be on the PC yeah, I was like trying to catch up on sleep and stuff, but mm -hmm. I think Mixer was the main part of that. Mixer, like you said, it was a bigger community. Yeah, it, Mixer was more US based than it yeah, was UK 100%. based, even though yeah. they did have UK streamers. Mm -hmm. But they were streamed during the day. It was some some of the people that I met throughout their community, and obviously being coming a partner and then joining the partner Discord. It it changed my life. Yeah, in a sense, like the way I would like rotate my schedule, like or I would do. I would I would I would try and do a UK stream for the UK like viewers that I had. Yeah. So that would be say like from nine until like four. Yeah. And then I would get a I would get like a quick nap in or like a two hour nap, and then I would stream from on the American yeah US lot. Yeah, for mm -hmm. the for the US lot, and that would be in late until like early morning. Yeah. And I think I still do that now. Yeah. It's like I'll stream like one ish, and then I'll go until like as late as possible. Yeah. And then I'll come off, eat, and then I'll come back on again if I remember to, or like if I want to. Yeah. Or if I'm not streaming, I still play with a lot of US people, and that yeah, and that you do. The yeah. Same with, and that's the same with uh, CFEs. Yes. Throughout my career in the ESO as well, because I would I would have like accounts on two different servers. Yeah. Like yeah, so I'd have a EU account for the EU people when they were on, and then the one for the US when I was playing with US friends. Yeah. And I think that's the same for CFEs. I'd be playing on US servers if I was playing with US friends. Yeah, it, yeah. it all depends, like who I'm playing with. And like, I think majority of my friends list were US, and I think that was a massive problem for me because I would have UK friends, and it was like I have different friends over a different world. I have some in Sydney, have some in China. Yeah, uh, and not, and it, it used to be like it used to like just close me in and like closer to the US times. I'm like. And then I would have a UK friend say, oh, can you come and play with me at this time? Yeah. I'm like, dude, I can't. I'm so busy. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just like, I'm trying to get sleep. I'm, oh, I'm staying up all night. <sighs> I'm staying up for like three days in a row, like trying to please everyone that I can, you know? Yeah. And it, and it got out of a hand and then that kind of affected my mental health a little bit mm -hmm. as well. Massively. Mass so what about sleep now? Are you better? Uh, uh, no, here we go. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> kind of. It's, it's, it's like myth. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's quite. It's, it's really interesting because I, I, it was um yeah. was it on last week's podcast. I try and get like four hours of sleep before. a day. That's not Usually. good, though, is it? Uh, but I mean, like everyone's different. Like, I know I everyone's. I, I got I... used to like staying up so long. Yeah. So I don't normally feel tired. Okay. Like so, yeah. like like the other day, I like I went to bed at like I think I went to bed at six. Yeah. PM, which is unheard of for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I didn't wake up until like three. Jeez. Okay. But like for the last couple of days, I've been waking up at five a.m. Yeah. I mean, like so, it's like I try and stay up. So I, when I woke up at like three a.m., I stayed up for two days. Yeah. I like just straight. I had, I had a ton of food then and like a lot of fluids, so I was looking after myself. No coffee, no game and drink like I used to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, like I still drink game and drinks here and there when I need mm -hmm. to. Or like. Or like keep me energized while I'm gaming, you know, like yeah, yeah. Keep, like do stuff as they would say. Um, but yeah, and then I've I've been waking up at like five a.m. So it's like I've been waking up at like five a.m. and then like just carrying on gaming throughout the day. Yeah. And then it's like I'll go to bed at like three, four, maybe sometimes six in the morning, and go to sleep. Get like get four or five hours, maybe six hours if I'm lucky, and go again. And that, it seems I'm like, uh, crazy. I'm like a Duracell. I mean, I'm like a Duracell battery. And it's like and because I wake up sometimes, I'm like, where am I? What? 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 And then I'm like, oh, let's go again. You're... And then other times I just wake <laughs> up and I, I just like I'm full of energy. Yeah. It's like let's go. Like, I'm ready for the day. So what do you think? Obviously, the future is for you and your mental health. Like, is it in a good space at the moment, or is it? Are you still struggling? Like, I know you said you've never taken. I'm still struggling. You are, did you say? Yeah, I would yeah. say because obviously, with my dad passing away in September. Yeah, I'm really sorry. That that uh, was um this, that was a big yeah, thing. Was, I remember talking yeah, to you about that. Yeah, I think with him passing away, 
and with it being so sudden that kind of yeah hit me for six yeah let's just say mm -hmm. that was because it was looking on the good end and then it went downhill again and then obviously he passed away yeah and and then things have declined after that like my relationship and stuff yeah and yeah it wasn't and i think that hit me for six but i think now it's it's stable okay so say it's stable i'm not like i don't i don't talk to any professionals or anything yeah. like that i don't take any medication mm -hmm. um but sometimes i write down how i'm feeling i like have like a diary that's good like a little journal book and it's like if i'm having a bad day then i recognize that i'm having a bad day so i'll go and sit in the garden with like a beer or something yep and, I'll, and it's like i'll try and be away from the pc I'll, i won't game if i'm having a bad day yeah i'll watch tv i'll watch like stuff on the smart tv i'll have like a popcorn or something gonna be a, yeah, a yeah, beer yeah. or a cold drink or something you know and it's yeah. like i'll try i'll try and take my mind off things like not let things swell in my mind and if i do i try and write it down how i'm feeling yeah that's really but interesting sometimes that doesn't work <clears throat> no it's true i mean it's actually really interesting that, that there's lots of obviously you, know, you mentioned yeah. this at the very beginning that it's different methods. everyone is totally different there's different methods and you know yeah. from medication to therapist to mindfulness to music to writing stuff down to yeah. going to the gym for going to walks to like just getting a different hobby in sports and, yeah. and whatever you know there is so much and this is again why we do this podcast is because i want people and this is why we do so many different stories and and kind yeah. of talk to so many different people spreading because, awareness yeah exactly spreading awareness and also like yes you are not alone but everyone is very yeah. different with their I've heard. Yeah. not not rehab i don't know what you want to call it your I've... um yeah therapy or whatever it is everyone is totally different and you know yeah. i mentioned this i still have like um you know fidget spinners and poppers yeah. and at the moment i've got an elastic band in my hand that i'm just constantly spinning you know that yeah. is you know again that is a very and people would take the piss out of me like my mum and dad and you know my, my other half right because i sometimes sit yeah. there and make noises like you know with like a fidget spinner and they're like oh my god will you just stop and i'm like no i can't yeah. it's like my kind of relaxation even though it's yeah yeah it's weird isn't it but yeah mine's like eating sushi all the time so. i know you constantly and the old food yeah. sending pictures all the time <laughs> that's uh, kind of my therapy yeah <laughs> well, i i think when you say i i think i think people know that they're not alone but it's i mean i i see it's a hard one with mental health because obviously like i say you don't know who to talk to and if you do have people you can talk to it's like you're always thinking on your mind will they understand mm -hmm. will they get it how will they how will they react when i tell them like what i'm going through yeah i think that's always like so for me like i would like i always try and keep my guard up like i always i think that's the thing with like our relationships as well like why some haven't worked out because I'm, obviously i'm not very emotional yeah i try i try to i try and open up but always in the end i get hurt like for example yeah and so for me it's it's harder for me to trust someone but i know how i'm feeling it's just that i can have it in my mind but i can't get it out in words yeah, that's but i yeah. can write it down sometimes yeah. so I'm, i so that for me is a strong point or i or, or i draw yeah. i won't draw how i'm feeling i'll just draw just draw to like yeah yeah i'll just draw to like express my, like to try and get those emotions out but i won't put it out on paper yeah. for example unless if i'm writing yeah so like so like two years ago i did a book i am um, not on mental health i'm no expert on that but i did like a sci-fi fantasy book oh did you nice yeah but i haven't published it I haven't, I haven't published it i just kept it away should you know and i was thinking about it but it's just like that it's like i'm constantly battling with myself like Oh, how well other people think like what did you know and it's it's a constant battle with myself but it's like you said when you like when you try and go out and you're constantly like trying to hype yourself up like trying to get mm -hmm. that motivation i feel like that's with me sometimes when i game sometimes like when i wake up and i'm like yeah oh what do i do what do i want to do it's like oh let's just get on anyway because i've got nothing else to do yeah, yeah, yeah. and i want to pass away time so i can go back to sleep or something <laughs> uh, and then start again so it's just like a a routine for me yeah it's, but it's, like, that's how... <clears throat> it's interesting because you 
you obviously said at the beginning you don't think it's healthy, but no, for you not. also it's it's a way though. Like well, I know it's not healthy for myself, and it's like yeah. And so I know that, and it's just like, I try and get out as much as possible. But like I said, when I do get out, it feels a little bit weird because I'm just, I'm not in my comfort zone. Yeah, of course, of course. So I so I'm like I'm always like I'm not like paranoid or anything, but I'm like it just I'm just like yeah I can't wait to get back home and get on my PC. Like, so what I'll, kind I'll of be in the sh- I'll on. be in the shop and I'll be like oh can this person just hurry up? What type of steps do you think you're gonna try and take? Are you gonna try and take to help that? If uh, there is any. Get out more. I, yeah. I think when I move into my new place. Um, yeah, that's soon, isn't it? Yeah, this is in like two weeks. Probably. Hopefully, like they said, I should be here in back my moving day by mid next week. Nice. I should be able to move in pretty soon. But with that new place, even though it's only like half an hour down the road where I am from now, yeah, it's pretty close to the shop. But with it being more spacious and there's more outside and it being a new build, yeah, and obviously with its own balcony, nice. I don't have to be in as much. Like I can just go out and like, yeah. I've got more freedom to do some more stuff. And the summer's coming as well. It's always yeah, nice. exactly. And There's sunshine. Like, yeah. But it's like, I try and go out. I try, but like I said, it just feels a little bit weird. Yeah. I mean, not like I'm like on crazy or anything, but that is, it, just I, feel, I, I, it doesn't I feel like, like I said, it's not like a comfort, like my comfort box yeah. or like it used to be because I wasn't as gaming as much. Yeah. But I think when, like, like I said, when I had a mixer partner and then, but that part of me, it kind of just like made me like seclude myself from everywhere else. Like I wanted to be left alone. Yeah. Like, I want to be in my own bubble kind of thing. And I think just dealing with like my father's bereavement and stuff mm-hmm. by myself was like a big thing for me. Yeah. Because it kind of like changed who I was like in a way. And it kind of opened my eyes to like, yeah, I have an issue with my mental health. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I'm not, I'm, like, I can't always do it on my own. Yeah. So I think me writing it down and then showing it to my mother or something like that. And then mm-hmm. speaking to, just, I think just speaking to friends is probably the best thing. Yeah. If you can get it out, it's probably the best. And speaking to the people who know. So for like, for you example, I'll be like, yeah, I'm not feeling good today. Yeah. Like, I think I've done that a couple of times. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, dude, like, I'm not feeling the best today. Like. Is how I'm feeling. Yeah. But for me, I don't like... So for me, that's an issue because then I feel like when I open myself up a little bit, I feel like I'm putting I'm, I'm, I'm putting my burden onto someone else. So I feel like I'm a burden to them. Even I know they're like, oh, yeah, I'm, no, you're not. You're not being a burden to yeah. anyone. But for me, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a burden. It's just like I'm, putting my, I'm opening myself up, which I don't do. Yeah. Ever. And it, that's very, like, strange for me to do. But I feel like... When I open up a little bit, I'm also being a burden on someone else, which I can't get my head, which I can't I know, get yeah. around myself. I've, 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 I, know people, I know people like that, and it's that thing, isn't it? It's, I think, yeah. <clears throat> but you are right there. You are, as soon as you start talking to people, it, it does help. Like, yeah. in my personal opinion, it's like, yeah. even if it's not your fix, it's not your thing, it's, you know, just that first yeah. step of talking to someone to, like, just take, and it is, yeah. and... You are taking all of the the stuff off your shoulders if you can, or even some of it, and you will feel slight. You think, you will yeah. feel better in the long run. I know sometimes you'll speak to someone and it will go, then that afternoon or that evening or the next day or the next week you still feel pretty crap. But then yeah, it's not it it's will... not an instant fix. No, definitely. And not. I think that's what people need to realize. Like, yeah, you might not feel like you got re- you might feel a little bit of relief when you've spoken about it because it's a little you taking. This some part of the pain mm-hmm. or like the pressure off your shoulders or, or like or that nagging bit in the back of your mind yeah and i think when you speak about it you feel a little bit of relief but like you said like later in the evening when you're when you're overthinking things and yes I think that's the hardest thing is when you're always overthinking things mm-hmm. you're like why did i do that like why did i talk when it when i feel like this but like you said in the long run yeah as long as you keep on talking to someone who, exactly it will get better and better. Yeah, for sure. It might not feel like it in that moment of time, but I think in the long run, you kind of, you kind of let, I, I kind of treat my mental health like as I do with like the way I think about bereavement, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like, like the pain will always be there. 
Yeah. Right, but as you talk about it, you learn to accept the pain. Yes. So it gets easy. It get not that it like pain never is going to go away. Mm-hmm. Like bereavement is always going to be there, like on birthdays, anniversary, etc. Of course. But you learn to accept the pain a little bit, so it gets a little bit more easier as as time goes by. I think you learn to right, adapt, always, don't you? Yeah, exactly. And it always will be there. Yeah. But you you just come to understand it more and how to deal with it. Yeah. And how to and like like you said to accept it and like. You know, and like you said, to adapt. Mm-hmm. And I think and that's the that's the way I treat my mental health. Yeah. By like accepting that I got mental health. Yeah. And then it's like, yeah, I got mental health. What can I do? What can what can I do today that I'm going to do different tomorrow? Or like how I'm going to adapt to this? Yeah. So it doesn't keep on so that I don't keep on having. I always I always say to myself, yeah, today might be a bad day, but another day might be a bad day, or tomorrow might be a better day. Yeah. It's always trying to keep my hopes up. I think I think you're right as well, and you know I I and I know other people don't always believe in this, and some people think yeah. you know, and I do know some people get better and they are mental health free time. and all that kind of stuff. I personally think I will live with this forever, yeah. personally. Um, but it is how I'm going to adapt and how I deal with it on a on a exactly. daily basis or weekly basis. And again, this is why, you know, and I do at the very beginning of each episode, I talk about my mental health yeah. because, again, I want people to know that it's not always perfect. You know, it's going to be up no. and down. Life is up and down. And it's how think, you deal with it and how you adapt. Yeah. And, you know, that, that I think is, is really important. No one's perfect. Yeah, exactly. Jesus. There's yeah. no one. like, And the thing is, that's the thing, isn't it? And I know there are people out there that either think they're perfect or thought they've had yeah. a perfect life and then, then they struggle a lot more because they're yeah. like, exactly. you know, something's happening to me and I don't actually know what this is and I don't know what's going on and why. And then they start, as you, you mentioned, yeah. overthink it. And it normally happens, especially for me, when I, f- like, go to bed yeah my missus can fall asleep instantly and i mean instantly head hits the pillow yeah. she's out yeah, out, for yeah. me i will sit there half an hour could be an hour could be an hour yeah. and a half sometimes and i'm just you know it and it is overthink, overthink yeah. loads of things and then that's you know and i had that in my head as i say at the beginning of the week and i was overthinking i've got too much too many things too many projects in my head that i feel like i'm not doing enough for and why am i not doing yeah. enough and then you start thinking bad about yourself so i should be doing more i should be doing this and and it's just life, you know, and it's yeah. how, you know, and I did, I get on, I got into a very I, downward spiral. I think spiral. that's a very normal thing to overthink things. Yes. You're always striving to achieve a better your, of yourself. I think you're always overthinking things to push yourself even more. Yeah. But it's like, I can honestly say right now, I have enough in my life that I'm happy with. It's good. And it's like, I'm happy with that. And I can accept that because I, I have enough. I am enough. Right now, I am enough, and I'm happy with that. And you won't get many people who say that. Yeah, you won't. Who who will happily say that they have enough in their life and that they're happy with themselves. Yeah. Right now, and it's like for me right now, I'm 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 okay with that. Yeah. I can come. I can come to terms with that. That's good. That is good. Um. Cool. Like this has been good, mate. Yeah, it has. It's been a. Yeah, I didn't think I'd be revealing so much today. I pre- honestly, yeah. I appreciate. I appreciate. Well, I it. think if it helps other people, then I'm okay with that. This is I this is if, yeah. If someone else can come forward and say yes, like yes, I I have an issue with like I I'm having issues with my own mental health. Can I talk to someone? Mm-hmm. And I that's yeah. That, that's that's the big step forward for them. I think that's the first step in mental health is acknowledging that you have mental health. Yeah, and that you. And that you're struggling with it. It's like, I always say to like friends who, because I've got like a couple of friends who are like, who have children who's like, who are married and they have mental health. But mm-hmm. I think for them, it's taking that step forward and say, look, I'm struggling. Yeah. I, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to deal with it. Please help me. Yeah. And I think that's the first step in taking that first step forward to help, to hopefully helping you, helping yourself and helping how you deal with your mental health yeah it's the first step by acknowledging it and saying look I'm like yeah i need help i need i need someone to talk to yeah for sure i find it hard to talk to someone but that's okay because like you can always like i said you could there's so many different methods of like doing with it 
like There's dealing loads. with mental health, like I said, you can write. I think most people probably find that more comfortable than speaking. If they can't speak, they normally try and write it down. Yep. And I think if you can't get the words out, you don't know what to say. I think writing down what you're feeling at that moment yeah. will help where you can go back on it as well. Yeah, because you can look at yourself and go back on it and yourself and go, oh, yeah, my God, exactly. why did I feel like that? Or, you know, yeah. that was, you know, that was maybe really... maybe feel like that, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And this is, again, why we have everything scrolling across the bottom here. I know it's very UK-based, so, again, I always apologise. And people that aren't watching, they're on, they're on Spotify, but we have here running across the screen all the numbers for Samaritans, Calm and Mind. And I've rung every single one of them about my own mental health and also other <laughs> yeah, people's. Same. And um, And the thing is... And I mentioned this again in one of the podcasts before that even if you pick up that phone and you ring the first two digits of this number and then put the phone down, that's it's an amazing just, start. Just that's yeah, amazing, exactly. you know, and, you know, if it's every day, you just add another number or every week, whatever it is, you know, but these people are amazing because they, there are someone you don't know. There's not a face to them. There's literally, it could just be a robot. It doesn't matter, but you just then blurb out you know and it is as soon as you start blurbing out even sometimes i talk about my mental health and i speak to my missus or my family or whatever and i talk about it and as i start talking about it and mentioning things i'm like in my own head i'm like oh my god why do i feel like that's so silly yeah. like that's why do i feel like that when it's not true you know but at that moment in time it was true you know in my head yeah. so it is as soon as you start talking about it, you actually a lot of people they actually start kind of fixing or healing themselves slightly because you know they go through a stage of you know realization of you know that feeling then is is not me and you know i, I do i think that yeah i've always been a big big talker when it comes to kind of mental yeah. health because it's helped me yeah you know That's so right. yeah yeah like i said there's always that stigma yeah always it's... and i think that's probably what stops people from talking because they'll be like oh I'm like, like i said i'm a man why should i why should i feel like this mm -hmm. i'm not like a geezer will be a geezer you know and yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. like exactly. it's okay to have that yeah okay 100%. to be like that and it's like there's no i think when it comes to mental health there's no right or wrong answers anyway. definitely not exactly yeah it's, and it's just like i think people need to get try and get away from that stigma because it's okay to talk about it yeah no one's not gonna riddle you for it and if they do that they're, they're idiots for doing yeah, it 100 percent. but it's just like you shouldn't feel shame or anything like that it's yeah. sort of like if you got if you need to talk about it then like you said there's there's the samaritans there's mind i even spoke mind and samaritans before yeah and that like samaritans will just sit there and listen mm -hmm. when you when you and mind are pretty much the same yeah there's they no just judgment sit there and listen yeah, yeah. exactly and uh, i think with are you doing this podcast it's probably the it's a really good thing like appreciate like I said, it there's probably a lot of people coming forward well i hope there's a lot of people I hope so. forward yeah exactly can, i hope so you can take that first step exactly no i appreciate that mate and honestly i really appreciate right. you coming on and um yeah, thank you i always ask everyone is there any kind of last thoughts or anything like that you want to kind of say or have we gone through pretty much pretty much but i would say like just keep strong you're not alone yeah there's plenty of people out there who will sit there and listen with yeah. no judgment and it's okay to say what's on your mind it's okay to be scared yeah it's okay you're not wanting to talk about it because there's always light at the end of the tunnel yeah and that's it isn't it is that thing isn't it? i don't know if it's a clothing brand or but it's it's okay to not be okay you know yeah, exactly. that it is it is it's a massive massive thing and yeah lots of help out say, there yeah but from my personal experience i would say don't try and bottle it up because it does get worse yeah it for does sure. turn your mind you do everything i've gone down that real bottling it up like i said i was brought up by that way by yeah sweeping things on the carpet bottling it up not talking about it so i would say if you got someone to talk to yeah you feel like you want to you feel like you have the motivation and you want to talk then talk yeah yeah bottling up will will at some point lead to a um yeah some type of explosion of a breakdown yeah. or you know a burnout or whatever you want to call it it, it, and it will causes happen. more stress yeah that's another thing it causes a lot of stress mm -hmm. exactly uh, yeah and it's awesome yeah, 
Thank you for having me. Nah, man. Honestly, thank you so yeah, much. It's been, like, it's, it's oh, been wicked. You. And um, yeah, so I'm just going to do sign off and I'll come chat to you in a bit. But massively appreciate it for this. I really do, yeah, mate. Thank you, mate. Cheers, dude. Speak to you in a bit. Guys, that was awesome. Like, really, really good. Like, it's nice because, again, I've known footage for, for quite a while. And, yes, we do talk about kind of our mental health to each other and just chatting and things like that. It's always it's always really nice to actually have someone kind of open up and, you know, give their story. And especially, as, as Fuller said, if that helps anyone, you know, along the way of just going, actually, that sounds very similar to me. And, you know, he looks like he's doing better now. That's kind of, you know do something similar or whatever it is you know i just you know and that's the whole idea of this podcast isn't it is, is that type of thing and meeting people along the line like fullest and all the other guests that we've we've had on and so no massively appreciate it so as always guys um i want to thank you for watching listening whatever it is you are you are like, doing and listening to this and yeah so i massively appreciate it and um as always yeah thank you fullest and yeah look after your mental health and we'll see you next week